I think for 2022, right, coming out of the pandemic, 2020, 21, I mean, it was a blur. It went really, really fast. And we, we adapted to different technologies and different ways of working. But the companies that are really going to differentiate themselves in 2022 are the ones that really get hybrid right. Uh, and hybrid isn't, you know, half the team on Zoom and half the team in the office, right? There are tools and technologies out there to really think about the human aspect of hybrid experiences. So um, digital facilitation technologies like Housebase out of Finland or a brilliant little startup, Toucan.events, a very nice, you know, hybrid, very um, human behavioral science based way of looking at hybrid rather than just, you know, Teams and Miro boards and Slack and WhatsApp. That's really not genuine hybrid working. There's a lot of noise today about the great resignation, right, and, and the challenge. And prior to that, we've had discussions around the war for talent. When you step back from that statement a little bit, um, look, you know, the, the, the talent side of the work equation is revolting a bit, right? So the war for talent, I, I, I loathe that term. And I loathe that term because talent isn't a prize to be won or a commodity out, you know, to be won on, the, on a battlefield, right? Talent is something we need to develop nurture and, and inspire. And so I think the organizations in 2022 really need to rethink their fundamental construct of talent, um, given the great resignation, uh, given that it, it, you know, it, it is a marketplace where the talent it, you know, kind of calls the shots today. So those that are working for, uh, looking for a more flexible and hybrid workforce, so rather than captive talent and retaining that talent, for me, I need to be thinking about how I can tap into flexible talent as and when I need it. So move to perhaps, you know, hybrid working, but think about a hybrid talent model as well. Yeah, so the third one, so, you know, we got to weave technology in somewhere. So artificial intelligence is, is starting to mature a bit. And some of the challenges we've had, especially with machine learning, is, you know, the key word there is, is the learning piece, not the machine piece. And so everybody talks about, you know, data is the new oil. Well, you know, as of today, Oil is really not very valuable, right? What, around 70 US dollars for a barrel of WTI crude, crude oil today? And I don't know about you, but I've never used oil in my life. And I doubt anyone else you know, listening to this has either. But what we have used is the byproduct of oil. Oil, once it's been refined, organized, structured into its valuable components to release value, right? The refining process, that's where we get value out of oil. And it's the same with data. And so over the last few years, what we've done was we've, we've had this rush to machine learning. Uh, we've had a mass amounts of data, but we really couldn't make sense of it. Not much of it was information. So a lot of synthetic data has been created. And I think in 2022, we're going to see some more um, legal cases around explainable AI. Tell me how your AI, how your algorithm came to that conclusion. Why did you serve that ad to me? Why did you exclude me from this opportunity? And so organizations who focus on explaining their AI and looking at that component of technology are probably going to be the ones best suited to, you know, um, to overcome the legal uh, challenges and ethical challenges around artificial intelligence.